Hey guys, and welcome to the video. This week we're going to be doing something a little bit different. It's the first time I'm going to be designing something. So I'm making this video as part of the Create ICG, or it's a Create Internet Creators Guild. And there's gonna be a whole bunch of other videos uh, based on that. There's a link in the description below for the playlist of YouTube stuff, and you can find it more at the website, which is also linked down in the description below. So for this video, I thought it would be fun to redesign my homepage. Uh, my homepage right now is based on a pretty standard WordPress template, kind of boring. I do web stuff, I figure I should have a decent looking website, so I want to do my own design on it instead of using a template. I think it'd be a lot of fun to go through the whole process from design into the coding and seeing how I, I do the whole thing. Anyway, that's enough talking, let's just get into it. Alright guys, so uh, what I've decided to do is actually compress the whole thing to a bit of a speed design and speed coding just because it would have been like an hour and a half long video if not, if I went through the whole thing. And I didn't do the best job of explaining everything as I was doing it, especially the, the design. Um, I've never designed something and done it at the same time. Uh, so right now I'm just setting up the document. I went with 1600 pixels wide because it fits nicely on my screen and is good to simulate a desktop and 4000 pixels tall just because it works well. It gives me lots of room to work with. In this one I'm not actually going to use that much space but uh, it's just sort of what I'm used to going with. Uh, you can see I have some colors uh, picked out on the side in a library in Photoshop there as well as two pictures that I'm going to be using. Now with this design I thought this would be a lot of fun for you know the Create ICG to create my actual website. Um, and I wanted something that was really clean and simple and nice. Uh, lots of white space, lots of breathing room, uh, with a singular focus just on driving people to my YouTube page. Because really, that's the main focus I have going on right now. Um, when it comes now to setting up the, the text and all of that, I'm really visual when I'm first doing it. If I had had a really big website where I had, uh, I knew I was going to have an H1 and H2 and H3 and all of that stuff, I'd probably be more focused on the ratio of the font sizes together. But because I pretty much just have a title and then some, a few paragraph text, um, I just really eyeball it and go with what I find visually pleasing. For titles, I usually just make it look good to begin with, especially if it's an H1 or something like that. I'm going to focus on, let's make this look good especially in the hero area where things tend to be even bigger and sort of on their own. Um, I'm gonna do it just based on eye and then adjust a little bit from there just to make sure the ratios are okay. But most of it's by eye. You can see already I've put my main paragraph, a nice big font size, and then I've a big space in between and then leading into my paragraph. Um, this is an image that I'm bringing in, just a little thumbnail picture, but I'm gonna turn that into an embedded video once I uh, get into my actual design or the coding. I found it looked a little bit boring. Um, I had a sketch originally for this that I'm following along. I had a whole bunch of sketches and this is sort of the one that I went with in the end. Um, and the sketch, it looked fine on the layout, but when I was doing it, I found it looked a little bit boring. I tried a box, tried blending modes. They all look terrible. So then I said, well, what if I just make this type of box, you know, a, a stroked box instead? And I thought that actually looked pretty good. Uh, I just need to make a few adjustments to it to balance everything out and make it look good. I wanted to make sure my spacing was equal and the picture was properly centered here. Um, and, you know, I wanted my eyes to be in the right spot, my face. That was kind of hard, actually, just getting the, that to, to look good. And again, I'm just really focusing on trying to have lots of white space and a focus on what people are going to be looking at when they're here and making it easy for the eye to jump from one to the next to the next. One problem, people, that often make when they don't have a lot of experience with the design is things get too cramped together. Uh, there's too much going on in the page, there's too much jumbled together, there's not enough space either between paragraphs or just between different elements as well. Here with the text that I'm putting in, I originally want to make it a little bit smaller because it was sort of my secondary paragraph text, but then I realized I have almost no text on this website. It's really, really short. Uh, I might as well just make everything paragraph text and make it all the same size, make it nice and big and easy to read. Um, my focus really on this, again, is nice, simple, and clean. There's not a lot of text, so I can keep the font size big. Um, I decided to put a drop shadow on this, um, what will be in my embedded video, because I do want it to stand out a little bit. I want it to pop off the page a little bit more than uh, what it was doing when it was flat. Um, so yeah, I just put a, a little bit of a drop shadow on there. Um, I wanted to make sure it was dark enough that you could see it well, but not too dark. You know, I, when, when you're doing a drop shadow, in general, subtlety is the key. Uh, the more obvious it is, sort of the, they can be a little bit weird looking if you go too dark with them. 
Um, then I just want a little button here that's going to be find me on YouTube. Nice and simple button. Uh, just again, I'm going for pure simplicity with this site. So a super nice and simple button. Now, one thing I realized when I made this button is I didn't like that color blue as much as I thought I had when I picked my color scheme. Uh, so don't be afraid of changing things along the way. Colors, I find, can be a, a bit of a problem as you work with them. I find my colors, I choose colors at the beginning, and then sometimes I don't like them so much. Um, so here I realized that blue is really not working for me too well, and I decided to come and change it. I tried grabbing a color from the thumbnail, but it looked ugly. Uh, so I went with this sort of tealy color that I tend to like, and I've been using a lot lately. So I decided to go with that. Um, and you'll start to see, I, mean, I have a few other things coming up later on that you might see uh, that I use that too for, that I also use that for. Um, right now what I'm doing is just organizing my layers, just keeping everything nicely organized. So I just did that. Uh, and now my very, very simple footer that's super, super simple, um, just with some social links in it. And that's about it. That's pretty much it for the website. So you can see it's based, again, I'm going to repeat myself, but it's based on simplicity and uh, lots of empty space and when you're designing things don't be afraid of the um, having you, the fact that you have room and think about what you want the person to be doing what's the the reason that they're on your site and what are they going to be doing when they're on the site that you're designing so in this case really part of just my style is this clean nice look or what I find is a nice look so I definitely wanted that to come across in the feel uh, the white space helps people focus on what they're going to be looking at and the colors. I don't have a lot of color on this site, but the color really is what leads the eye and helps things um, go along. I s was trying to see if I could add some color to my links down below, but I just stuck with an underline in the end. Um, yeah, and so you're, I'm going to scroll up now, I think. And just to show you that when you're on the site, you see my name is Kevin, you see the thumbnail, you see the button. That's the main things that people are going to be focusing on. If you want to spend the time to read the text, awesome. Most people don't spend a lot of time actually reading text on a site. So I want to make my goal super obvious here on what I want people to be doing. Now jumping over to the code. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do now is just bring in my type kit stuff so I can use the Proxima Nova on my site, which is just copying that link, uh, the JavaScript uh, link into there. Uh, and now I'm just putting my design on the side because I like looking at my design as I'm coding things. I find that's the easiest way to do it. So first, I'm just doing my markup right now. Uh, I'm just throwing in a section for each thing. It's not really a header per se. There's no navigation or anything like that. So I'm just building this out with um, a few sections. This div sample video thing, I'm going to change how it's set up a little bit later. Uh, I go through a few different options as I'm doing that. Uh, my about me and then my uh, footer down at the bottom. I forgot to give it a class right now. I come back and do that a little bit later on. Just pasting in all the text. Yeah, and just putting my links in now. The text is done. Then uh, there we go. We take a look and may just make sure everything looks like it's working and it does. Uh, and so now I'm going to go into my files and in this I end up with a lot of files. I'm using SAS to build this. I'm just fixing those little um, things from the soft returns uh, from Photoshop. I get those little boxes showing up. So it's just removing those. Uh, and now I start just making my SAS files that I'm going to be using. Um, so I'm starting with uh, my variable ones for colors and type uh, and then I'm importing them into my main SAS file. I don't have a lot of variables to put in here. I only have a couple of colors and the one font. Uh, so these are pretty basic files that I'm going to do. Uh, we'll see now for my type. <laughs> I made a little mistake here, um, but it does. I did verify that it was working. <laughs> I was a little distracted. So um, I see that my font is working and then I realized I want to make this into a variable. So I just called it font instead of font stack. Um, and I have my two font weights, my normal and my bold. It's such a simple site. I wanted to keep my variables pretty simple. Uh, and then I had to update it there, and that's all. Uh, for my colors, I had my brand color, which is that green color I was using, my text color, and the light gray that I wanted to use in my footer. Uh, so I just called that one light gray in the end. Oh no, I called it BG color in the end. Um, so I'm just gonna throw those all in. There we go, so those are done. Um, then I got normalize and threw that in as a in my vendor folder and that should come in in a second there we go uh, so normalize I use on all my projects I like always having it I should just automatically include it in my uh, 
my folder. Uh, then I realized I didn't have any containers set up. So I came through and put all my containers in there. I complete. I do this all the time. I forget to do my containers and then have to go back through and add them in. Um, and now I'm just in my uh, base file setting up my container. And there we go. We can see that it's starting to work. Uh, my image right now is not inside of a container. So, but then I center aligned everything, so that fixes that. Um, playing around with my font sizes a little bit just to get it looking more like what I wanted it to. Uh, and now I start working on the hero section at the top. So I'm um, just, I hear I thought about doing a section of padding 5M0 just to create the, the spacing that I want, but in the end, um, I just realized that it wouldn't really work. I end up taking that out a little bit after. Uh, I have some problem with my background position at different screen sizes. It works perfectly at this screen size, actually. Uh, I think I go with a left. Uh, I never end up fixing it <laughs> in the video, uh, but uh, I might get around to that at one point. For now, it's still looking like that. I'll, I'll get around to fixing that at one point. Um, now I want to just uh, typography. I don't have a lot in here. It's just setting up my font size. I call it H1. Do I keep? I don't remember if I keep that as an H1 or if I give it a different class name actually. Um, yeah, so I, I originally I wanted to use the outline with the outline offset, but then I realized that I can't, with the offline outset, you can't do different for right and left and top and bottom. Yeah, I changed it to title box because I want to play around with it a little bit and I don't want. I'm thinking in the future, I might build out this website a little more, add some more content to it. I might have other H1s. I probably don't want them all to have this box on it. So that's why I gave it its own class. Uh, playing with the line height a little bit, just because my lines were really close together. By default, the default line height's usually not very good. Um, so I wanted to add to my default line height there. Um, now I'm in my component, so I'm gonna build my button, I believe. Oh, my video box, sorry. Uh, yeah, so the video box first. Um, I tried a few different things for that. That worked perfectly, sort of, for what I wanted to do, but then I ended up changing how I did that um, soon because I realized uh, it doesn't quite work the way I want it to, especially once um, I bring in some other stuff. But anyway, we'll see uh, my final solution. Uh, the translate, this is the big space on the bottoms because of the translate Y minus 50%. It positioned the whole thing properly. Um, but yeah, so now I've, I just put the sample video on the picture itself instead of on the big div, because that makes more sense. Uh, but we'll see that causes problems once I bring in the iframe, because iframes are funny. Now is when I realized I have that problem with the big space and the translate Y. Um, and I, I tried that, which obviously was a bad idea. Um, and the padding clearly will not work. Um, so I think I end up taking a completely different solution with this. Yeah, I just end up doing it differently with my padding. And uh, now onto my button. Text decoration, none. The button's pretty simple. Um, so text decoration, none, inline block, some padding on there just to make it look good, and the background color. And then I just play with my padding until it looks nice. There we go. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, and then I do I? Oh, I didn't do the hover effect yet. I come back and do the hover effect a little bit later. Uh, now I build out the social thing down at the bottom, which is super, super simple. That's pretty much it. I'm just playing with my padding again just to make it look nice. Uh, oh, here we go. Now I'm doing my buttons hover effect, which I'd forgotten about originally. Uh, so I want to, I thought about doing it. Oh, I think I did. I was going to change the color of it, but I didn't like how it looked when I changed the color. So instead I want to make it sort of get this like effect, like it's moving up and down. So I'm adding a drop shadow to it. Uh, so when I hover on top, it's going to get a drop shadow, but I'm also going to have it move. Um, so I'm going to use my transform scale. I don't want to change the padding because that would shift the whole page around. Whereas the transform doesn't shift the page. The transform sort of keeps everything where it was, but it changes the size of it without pushing other things out of the way. Uh, so that works better for making it bigger. And then I just played around with the speed of it, my shadow and all of that until it looked a bit more natural. I was also wondering, I wanted the same angle on the video shadow and this other shadow, but I wanted things to look um, proper. Um, and then my image wasn't resizing, so it was causing lots of weird problems when I started trying to look at it responsibly. 
so this is where I went and got um, my embed code from YouTube and tried to set it up and I ran into some problems here I won't lie to you <laughs> um, so just going through I um, uh, if you're using an iframe controlling the um, width and the height can be a pain you have to give it a height if you're not you can't use height auto or it's going to default I think to 150 pixels um, so what I did is I put it in a, a wrapper so I have my sample video wrapper and I have my sample video and I'd found a trick that was supposed to work, but that didn't work for me for some reason, which you can see now a height of zero with a padding bottom, which should um, set it up properly. But that padding bottom was all even was always going relative to the width of my page. Um, and it was just causing some problems. It wasn't going, if it was a full screen video, it would have worked fine. But because I didn't want it to be a full screen video, it was giving me this black bar at the top and bottom and you can see I was I was getting kind of frustrated with this actually. <laughs> um, I came really close to just switching it out to be an image that you'd click on and go to my page. Um, so yeah, at 100% width, it works perfectly fine. I tried then cheating with the scale um, to shrink the whole thing down. Actually, is that what I end up leaving it with? Uh, I think so, but then that, yeah, it got too big or it got too small. So I, I'd had some issues with that too. The scale did, um, I started playing around with a whole bunch of stuff really to try and get this to work properly. <laughs> I was getting really frustrated with it. At first that scale trick I thought was was perfect. Um, and the problem was it would just get too big at the big screen sizes. Um, I ended up building some media queries into it I think uh, because I liked it being 100% at the small screen size. It makes sense that it's the full screen S and then at the large screen size uh, it doesn't. Here I'm just fixing up a few things. Um, so I'm going into the what it would look like now uh, at a, a, a on a phone size. I'm f setting it up properly for the phone now instead of uh, the large screen size. And uh, I'm going to start pumping in some media queries in a second. So I'm going, it looks pretty good up until now. And then at my width of, I think, 750, uh, I switch out the width of my sample video wrapper. Um, I give it a, a specific height and width um, that sort of locks it in and stops it from changing size. And then I just played around with the sizes a little bit until I got the sizes that I want. Um, here I was just checking what the dimensions are um, when you're embedding a video at the small screen size. Um, and yeah, pretty much I was just playing around with the size to try and get it to be the size that I wanted to while keeping the right aspect ratio so I didn't get those black bars showing up. Um, I tried doing something for a second with the viewport width, but I had a feeling that would screw everything up. And there we go. So uh, I pretty much, it grows with the page. Once you get to a larger screen size, it gets locked in place. Uh, and then I played around a little bit um with the padding and everything so it overlaps the way i want it to and that was pretty much it i think uh yeah then and there's the site and uh, as of this you can go to my site which is kevinpowell.co and actually see it live um if you want to check it out so thank you so much for watching i'm really happy you made it to the end of the video if you are here and you haven't already subscribed please consider subscribing if you like the video please hit the thumbs up and of course leave a comment below if you have any comments any questions whatsoever and yeah, I hope to see you in my next videos.